Hey, I'm Jennifer, and I'm going to do a clean edit for you in Lightroom today. I always like uh, watching these tutorials on CM, especially because it's really interesting to me to see how everybody does their own version of a clean edit differently. So I figured it would be interesting for you guys to see mine. I haven't actually um, done a clean edit in color before. I've done um, an edit in black and white for a tutorial. So I figured, let me try a color version. And let's see um, what you guys may think. So I hope you find it helpful. All right, so this is an image that I shot um, the other day, actually. Um, we went to a diner, really cute old fashioned diner, and I was kind of kicking myself because the amount of room I had in the diner to take pictures wasn't as as wide as I would like it to be. So I had the only lens I had on me was my 35, excuse me, which is what you see right here. I use that, my Canon 35L. And um, I mean, it's a great lens, but it just, I, I'm basically backed up to the counter at the diner here and they're standing in the doorway. So I do kind of wish I had a, my um, 2470 on me, but it happens. So this is what I have. And I, I really like this picture because um, what you can't see is over here, there's some little, um, those, those little machines that I'm sure all your kids go crazy over where they ask for a quarter to get whatever little trinket is inside that ends up on your floor of your house <laughs> after they beg you for a quarter but my kids are over here looking at theirs and I think they got uh, some sort of like a shopkins I think they call those things or these little tiny little rubbery pet looking thing I don't even know what they're called but so that's what they're basically exchanging here in, in the little area and I liked it because of the light coming in from the door and just the colors and the kind of busyness here going on so I decided to show you how I would do a clean edit on this one. All right, so first of all, as you can see, this is completely as straight out of camera. And I am gonna be, this is a full disclosure, I shoot crooked very much. So <laughs> as you can tell, it's completely, completely crooked. So we're gonna go over here right now. And I, the first thing I would normally do is go right down to the lens correction panel and enable profile corrections. And that kind of straightens everything out um, from the lens that you use. Then I'm gonna hit constrain crop and do auto. And that levels everything out. And sometimes, sometimes though, the constrain crop can be a little off. So sometimes you have to go in and see if you go into manual right over here and you have this little transform panel in here, you can slide these around all different ways, but it can get a little nutty. So it actually, I think, yeah, there we go. But you, so you do sometimes have to do that. I will admit, sometimes you hit the button one time and that's it. Other times you have to go in and actually fiddle around with it till you get where you like it. But I think that looks pretty straight to me now. Okay, we gotta go to color because I'm gonna zoom in here. I do get some chromatic aberration from this lens. It's actually not too bad. See the green here and the purple here. I didn't have my lens hood on me, but also there's a lot of backlighting here. And I do get, tend to get chromatic aberration with this lens, even though it was definitely not an inexpensive lens. It's my, <laughs> it was my Canon 35L and it's shot on my, um, sorry, 5D Mark III. So um, I still do get chromatic aberration sometimes. So I, all you gotta do is go in here, you click, click remove chromatic aberration. You can either use the little, um, uh, eyedropper tool to highlight on it and click and it will take it away. Sometimes though I notice it takes too much away and you can have really bad issues and it doesn't always take all of it away. So sometimes you can just go around and do that. Actually, of course, now when I say it, it's going to do a great job. So other times though, I promise you, it doesn't always do a great job, but sometimes you have to go in and do it manually and um, that's not too hard to do at all. I do see a little still in his hair, but that's actually not too bad. But there have been some times where I've done it and it's taken away like a lot of the coloring here. And then sometimes it's got been so bad where I completely had to like trash the image and it very makes me very upset. But it doesn't always happen, but sometimes it can happen. Okay, so that actually looks really good and it removed it. So I'm happy. Okay, I'm going to move up to the detail paddle being we're right above there. And we're going to go with sharpening. There's a little box here that lets you kind of zoom in at 100% so you can see how you're, how it's looking. So what I do, if you click on it twice, sorry, once rather, if you click on it once, it zooms out. And then if you just click on it over here, 
once where you want it to zoom in on, it'll zoom in on the area that you want it to. You can also move this around. Um, I believe you can also take this and put it where you want it to, but I always have a hard time because I have a, a, a tablet, a bamboo tablet, and I don't have the pen that goes with it, the little touchy thing. I use my fingers and I can't figure out the finger combination <laughs> to take, to pick these things up and move them over on the picture. But I believe you can do that with that. Another thing you can do is in here, you can go to one-to-one -to -one and then it'll come up here, right? It'll come up here and then you can move it around that way too. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. You can click on it, you can click in a box. So now we're up at 100%. And you can see, you can see more of the detail in the sharpening. So I'm going to bring up the sharpening a good amount. I don't want to go too crazy. I'm going to bring up the detail because I don't want to lose any of the detail as well. Okay. And then I'm going to click, um, alt option and mask them to, and then click on the masking slider and it's going to slide with me here and you see how it changes to, from color to like black with the white and the white area is what's going to be sharper with the basking. There you go. And I like that. And, um, so we're going to, we're going to, let's keep it right here. Let's bring up the noise reduction a little bit. Nothing too crazy, but I kind of like when I do that, I like how it gives a little bit of smoothness to their skin. And I really like that a lot. So I'm bringing that up just a little bit. Okay, and now we're gonna back up. Excuse me, okay, perfect. Now, um, we're gonna do a little bit in the HSL panel, not right now. Again, this is just a clean edit. So we're not gonna do it too crazy. The exposure, I'm trying to think. Well, let me, let me, um, let me wait, let me go back over here. Okay, so I use my Expo disc for this, and I, I actually like the white balance on this. I think it looks really, exactly like it should look. It came out pretty well. And I, I, the Expedis can really help me generally get a very good and decent white balance straight out of camera generally, but I'm going to bring it up just a little bit just for preference. I wanted to warm it up a little bit. It was kind of towards the end of the day. So I like that. Okay. And I'm going to, for this, oh, let's go down here to the tone curve. I do for my clean edits, I like to hit medium contrast. I just love what it does. I think it really gives a pretty, a great dimension to the photograph. And I just like it. I mean, if you don't, if you don't want to um, add medium contrast or strong contrast, you can also just go up here to the contrast and add your own. I mean, you can go add a lot, just a little. I should kind of like that a little bit more. I should kind of like that. Okay. So there we go. I like that. Okay, now um, shadows, I think I'm gonna bring down the shadows just a little bit. I like the darkness on the outside and the light just coming in from here. I'm gonna bring down the blacks, not a lot, just a little bit. You can always click on your, um, the box right over here to the right, to the left, I mean, sorry. That can show you where your, um, where the clipping is. See how down here it's blue? So that you know that that's too dark and that's not a concern of mine at all because it's nowhere near the image just on the outside. It's not on them. So it's perfect to me. So there is no clipping. Also the highlights, this shows the highlights from the clipping. Again, it's in the areas I expect it to be. It's a little on the floor, nothing too crazy on the floor. I mean, I can always bring those down just a little bit, but that's not in an area where it bothers me. So I actually don't mind it at all. Um, Let's, I think we're going to bring it down to, to minus two. The blacks are going to minus two. Whites just up a little bit. Okay. Clarity as a slider, I really do like to, to use in my edits. Um, some of my edits, I, I've actually gone up to like 13. Some black and whites, I've taken even more. Some colors, I've gone up even higher. Um, and this one, I would not go that high. I think I'm just going to keep it at somewhere low, maybe on a four or there we go. Just low. I think I actually want to do a plus five. I think let's do plus five. Okay. There we go. Just clicking in and get that. And for vibrance, 
Whenever I have an image where there's people in it, I tend to like to use the Vibrance slider. You can use the saturation also, but I tend to just use the Vibrance slider when it's just when there's people in it. Because I think if you do with go with saturation, you run the risk of really over oversaturating and their skin tone starts to look not the way it should. So I tend to just use the um the vibrant slider when I'm talking about skin tones for my kids. And you can you can go up a little higher, but it will give you that vibrancy if you can tell right there. I think it's a little much for me. I would never go that high generally. So I think this is a good amount right there. I think that looks great. Um, I did play around in here. Let me bring it down a little bit too. There we go. Okay, so we'll do some of the lights in here. So we go down to the tone curve and I, I reduced the shadows to about 20. The darks I took down just a little bit. Again, I'm going to bring up the shadow clipping. We're still good, no issues on them, which is perfect. I added a little plus seven on the lights, which really would bring out the background just a little bit. I don't wanna lose some of the detail in that, so I'm not gonna go up too high. And I really like that. And now, okay, now, again, this is just for a clean edit, going down to the HSL panel, and we're going to go down to luminance. This is where you can really bring out the color of their skin tone. I'm going to bring this up a little bit, especially in my son. You can see what a nice little difference this makes. You can also adjust the red too, but I want to be careful because there's other red in the image right now. So I just want to be able just to, to um, I want to keep that where it's at right now. Okay, now... That's pretty much where I would do, oh, sorry. I do do a little bit of vignette. Let me bring this down a little bit. I don't go too crazy, I mean, you can really go nuts. And I think what's great, if you look at the, the vignette and you change things like, if, well, let me show, change the feathering. Let me add no feathering. Okay, that is what you don't want. Like, <laughs> you don't want this hard, harsh line, but it does give you an idea to see what the feathering is gonna look like. Here is the midpoint at 50. Now we're gonna change the midpoint a little bit more, right? And now we're gonna change the roundness. So now you really get a chance to see what it's looking like, okay? And obviously I would never make it this high, but I kinda want a little bit of roundness like this, more like an oval, I guess you'd call that. I want the midpoint more, more like there. Of course I want the feathering. I'm taking back the amount. That's way too, obviously. I would never do something that heavy. And then feathering. Now you can see where it is. Very good. Okay, right about there. That is perfect. I mean, I think I might, let me see with the dodge. I might just do a little bit of lightning on her face, just a little bit more. I have my mask, I make sure I did show select, selected mask overlay. I'm just gonna bring up the shadows and the exposure, just a little bit. You can turn this off if you're in that, that area so you can see where it is and I like that. I like that you can see her face a little more. I do like that. Let me bring little highlights in there. I like that. There we go. Okay, so that for me is a clean edit in Lightroom. Now, I probably would not end here. I think because of the fact that I used my 35 and I didn't get as wide as I would like, I am incorporating some parts here that I'm just not, I'm not happy with. Like I. I don't think it makes or breaks the image, but I would want to get rid of it. So I would probably take this into Photoshop because unfortunately this is something that I probably would not be able to move remove very well in Lightroom and make it look realistic looking and not like I obviously did. So I would, I would click on the image, edit in um, Photoshop and take it into Photoshop and do some um, more heavier cloning. Um, but this is just a clean edit, which I wanted to show you. So here is the clean edit. And if you wanted to, after you do an edit and say this is 
you know, this is around the range of where you'd like it. You can can go up here to, uh, which one? Goodness. Okay. Develop. That's what it was. Sorry. It's been a while since I've made one of these and click new preset. And then you can actually title it clean edit. If you wanted it to, I could title this clean edit, clean edit. I might call it 2.0 cause I have another clean edit. Um, I want it to be in user presets, which are all the ones that I've created and you can click on these or you can check these check none. It says you can click the box, check none, check all. And it just does everything you want it to do. And then you click, create and it shows up in your user presets, which is where I have all my other ones. And I'm going to do, let me just do a quick little snapshot for you. This is just saving this editing that I have right here. And I'm going to show you before and after. Okay. So here is after, and here is the before <laughs> after. There we go. See the difference? Really nice, nice little clean edit. A little bit of contrast. I think it really turned out really well. All right. So I hope this helps. I hope you found it helpful and enjoyable. And that's about it. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye.